Thank you, worship team, for leading us in praise, worship, and prayer. We welcome you to Sunday School, and we're so happy to have you here. We want to welcome all of those listening on Hope FM. We know so many of you watch us on Hope TV, and many of you also join us every week online. We're so happy to have you here. 
Now I'd like you to remind you to have your Bibles and your notebooks and your pens ready and let's get into today's lesson. But before we go into today's lesson, let's look at what we learned last week. Last week, we continued our series about facing the giants. And last Sunday, we talked about facing the giant of discouragement. Teacher Rose talked about how we should not be discouraged or lose hope because God will never leave us. He's with us in every difficult situation. God gave Gideon in our story last week the courage to face a huge army. The angel of the Lord called him a mighty warrior, even though he felt like he was the weakest in his family. Do you remember the memory verse from last week? That's right. It was from Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What a great reminder that God will always give us the victory. Now, as we go into today's lesson, I want you to do something with, you, with me. I want you to imagine with me for a minute that there's a new holiday created in Kenya. The holiday is called Do What You Want Day. Now, on this special holiday, you have no limits on the money you can spend, on what you can do, on where you can go, on what you can eat. Basically, you can do whatever you want. Now, think for a minute of all the fun things you could do on that day. Now, if you really had those 24 hours with all the money in the world, how much of that money would you spend doing things for other people? Would you only think of yourself or would you include your friends and family? And even more than that, how many of you would think of doing things for people in need? So that brings us to today's lesson and the giant that we're going to speak about today. It's the giant of selfishness. Now, the key word in selfishness is the word self. We use the word self to refer to ourselves as different and distinct from other people. Now, God made us all unique. He made us all different, and that's a good thing. But there's something in all of us that makes us want to only think about ourselves, talk about ourselves, and please ourselves. And that is not from God. Being selfish is trying to keep things for ourselves and get things for ourselves without any thought for the people around us. When you refuse to help others or to share, you are being selfish. And if we're all honest with ourselves, we all can see that sometimes we all struggle with this giant. Well, how do you get victory over this giant of selfishness? As with all the giants we've been talking about, we have to look to the Bible. So our Bible story begins with a man called Elimelech and his wife, Naomi. They both lived in Bethlehem, but had to leave because there was a famine in the land. They moved to a place called Moab where they're with their two sons, Malon and Kilion. Elimelech and Naomi's sons grew up in Moab and married two Moabite women called Ruth and Orpah. Sadly, the Bible says Elimelech and both his sons, Malon and Kilion, died. This left Naomi alone, as well as her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, without husbands and, of course, no children. Around that time, Naomi also heard that the famine in Bethlehem was over, so she decided to go back home. Naomi told her daughters-in-law to go back home to their mothers and to their families. She had no children for them to marry and really nothing to offer them. The Bible says that Ruth and Orpah cried because they loved their mother-in-law, Naomi. But finally, Orpah decided to go back home to her family, but Ruth insisted that she stayed with Naomi. Ruth told Naomi, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Ruth loved Naomi and she made an unselfish choice to go to this strange land of Bethlehem with her. She left her family and her homeland and accepted the people and the God of Naomi. And the two women traveled to Bethlehem. Well, the two women had little money and they really needed to find a way to find food. Naomi was an older woman and she couldn't work. And so Ruth decided to go into the fields, pick up any grain that was left behind by the workers. In Israel at the time, an owner of a field would allow poor and needy families to pick up extra grain that was left on the ground as their food. 
This activity was called gleaning. It was very hard work, but Ruth was willing to do it with an unselfish heart. Now, the field that Ruth was working in happened to belong to a man called Boaz. Boaz just happened to be a close relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. And in their family, Boaz was what was called a guardian redeemer. This meant that he could provide assistance to a family member so they wouldn't lose their name or estate. Essentially, he would take care of any family members if they had lost um, a close relative um, through death. Now, Boaz was very impressed with Ruth. She was, he was impressed with how he stayed and gleaned in the field and worked very hard. He even told his workers to leave extra grain on the ground just for her to pick up. He told her she could stay in his field as long as she wanted and she would be safe. He also told her that he knew all he had done, she had done for her mother-in-law, Naomi, leaving her own land and choosing to serve God. After they lived in Bethlehem for some time, Naomi told Ruth that it was time for her to look for a husband. And Naomi believed that Boaz would be the perfect choice since he was a close relative and had the right to marry Ruth. When Ruth talked to Boaz about it, he was delighted. He respected Ruth for her unselfish care for her mother-in-law and also came to love her as well. Boaz quickly made arrangements to marry Ruth and they soon married and made their home in Bethlehem. Well, later they had a son called Obed. Now the Bible tells us that Obed grew up and became the father of Jesse. And we all know that Jesse was the father of King David. So Ruth was actually King David's great grandmother. And if you open your Bible to Matthew chapter one, verses five and six in the New Testament, all of these names, yes, including Ruth, are listed in the family line of Jesus. Now, Ruth, we can see from the story, was such a wonderful example of how to defeat the giant of selfishness. She had an opportunity to think of herself. She could have stayed in her own country with her family, but she chose to put the needs of Naomi above her own. She accepted Naomi's people and Naomi's God. She went out to glean the fields in Bethlehem so that they both could have food to eat. Boaz in the story was also unselfish, helping Ruth um, with the grain as she gleaned in his fields. God honors people who honor him by unselfishly caring for others. And we can see this so clearly through this story. Everyone in the story had good results. Through their unselfish acts, we today also benefit because Jesus, our savior, came through their family line. But the perfect example of living unselfishly is the life of Jesus. He did the ultimate unselfish act. He gave up his life on the cross so that we could have our sins forgiven and live with him in heaven forever. This should make us also look at our own motives and actions. Our motives are driven by who we want to please. So when you look at your own motives and actions, do they say that you want to please yourself or do they say that you want to please God? If you look at the actions of Jesus throughout the Bible, it's very clear that he was always trying to please God. So as you think of the lesson this week, remember that every day we have a chance to make unselfish choices and decide to help people. So if you really had that day, that 24 hours to do whatever you want, how many of those choices would be unselfish? Now, if we want to defeat the giant selfishness, it's very important for us to have accepted Jesus into our hearts as our savior first and allow the Holy Spirit to work in us to really deal with those unselfish behaviors in our life. So if you're listening or watching and you know that you're not a Christian and yet you desire to be, I'd like you to close your eyes with me and say this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again. Thank you for forgiving my sins and making me whole. I ask that you come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. And I ask that you make me the person 
that you desire for me to be. In your name, amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, you made the most important decision. Please find someone to share it with, like a parent or a teacher. We also hope that you find a church to plug into, um, that you start attending Sunday school each, each Sunday, and also take time on your own um, at home with your Bible uh, to spend time with God in Bible study and in prayer. Now, this brings us to our memory verse for today. It comes from Romans chapter 15, verses 2 and 3, and this is what it says. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up, for even Christ did not please himself. We can see from verse 2 in our memory verse uh, that each of us are to please our neighbor. Now, who is our neighbor? Our neighbor is everyone around us, our family, our friends, our teachers, our classmates. The Bible says that we are to please them for their good to build them up. This means doing something good for them to show that we are concerned for them. Doing something that would be for their benefit. Now, are we only to please people when we feel like it or when people treat us well? No. The Bible says that we are to please our neighbor, which means everyone, even those who bother us or may not always treat us kindly. And verse 3 gives us the reason for why we should please the people around us. It says, because Jesus did not please himself. Jesus, like we said, is the greatest example of someone who did not please himself. He did the most unselfish act for us. He died on the cross to take the punishment for our sin. God's kind of love places people's needs above our own comfort and convenience. Now let's look at what we've learned today. Number one. We can defeat the giant of selfishness by doing things for others. Number two, we learned from the example of Ruth and most importantly from the example of Jesus, how we can be unselfish. Number three, we learned that God honors those who honor him and care for others unselfishly. And finally, we sit and remember and, and think about all the good things that we can do for someone this week. Well, we thank you for joining us today. Uh, thanks for listening into our lesson. We hope that you were blessed by it. And we pray that you have an awesome week ahead. Goodbye and see you next week as we learn about facing another giant. Bye-bye.